drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hello students welcome to edpdevel.com your online gateway to the world of invaluable knowledge during our last discussion we tried to understand the conceptual framework for calculating the present value of an future annuity we try to understand with the help of a numerical that how exactly the present value of the future annuities if they are treated as a lump sum and invested for the same n number of years against i percent rate of return yields the same result yields the same amount at the end of the nth year which is being obtained by the future value of the annuity calculations so from the formula point of view p into 1 plus i to the power of n was equal to a within bracket 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 bracket close all upon i that is the future value of a lump sum was equal to the future value of an annuity and using that formula we try to derive the formula for p during our last discussion we started the discussion of the derivation and by the time we closed our discussion we were almost near the completion of the formula so before we proceed let's take the formula once again so the formula started from p 1 plus i to the power of n is equal to a within bracket 1 plus i n minus 1 bracket close hole within i that is the future value of the present lump sum and this lump sum was what how did we get this lump sum this lump sum has been obtained by calculating the present value of the future annuities this lump sum was the sum total of the present value of the future annuities conceptually it meant that when the sum total of the present value of the future annuities when it was invested for the future as a lump sum in order to obtain the future value then the future value which we thus got against the same number of years and this against the same i percent rate of interest as which was being used in the case of calculating the future value of an annuity was the same amount that was an identical amount which we would have obtained by calculating the future value of an annuity using this particular formula we used a numerical to understand where a loan was being taken at present and the borrower was given an option to repay the loan against 15 years for 14 percent rate of interest at an annual amount or, or at an annuity amount of 11,396.93 and the second option was that the invest or the borrower wanted to repay the loan in one go as an lump sum payment and we found that when he chose to pay the loan as a lump sum payment he had to pay 4,9660 USD at the end of the 15th year against a 14 percent rate of interest lump sum and the same amount arrived by calculating the future value if he would have chosen to repay the loan on the basis of an annuity schedule as proposed by the bank so the amount was almost identical bearing the fact that we rounded off all the errors and, and everything so thus we found that conceptually the future value for the lump sum calculation was being put in front of the calculation for future value for an annuity for the same i and for the same n the logic being that the present value of annuity cash flows should be exactly equal to the future value of a lump sum if the present value would have been treated as a lump sum and invested in the future against the same number of n and the same number of i so coming back to the formulation part when it was p into 1 plus i to the power of n is equal to a within bracket 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 whole upon i taking P, we have to solve for P in order to arrive at the present value of the future annuities. This was the flow which we were taking through. You can just take a look at this. So P worked out to be A into 1 plus I to the power minus N within 1 plus I N minus 1 whole upon I. Therefore, P 1 plus I minus N, P 1 plus I raised to the power N, the base being same, we added the power which reduced the base to 1 plus i to the power of 0 which was 1 therefore 1 into a was a minus a into 1 plus i to the power minus n upon i so p was a taken common 1 minus 1 plus i minus n so upon i so therefore since it is an against the protocol to write it like this to represent a negative power by raising a negative power we show it as a reciprocal therefore p is equal to a within bracket 1 minus 1 upon a plus 1 plus i to the power power of n 
pole upon I. So, by solving this, taking the LCM, LCM was 1, 1 plus i to the power of n, 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1, so P is equal to 1, 1 plus i n minus 1, to 1, that is LCM, the least common factor was 1, n2, 1 plus i to the power of n, multiplied by 1 upon i. I could have also shown it as i minus 1, but that is again, that is not the way to show it, the correct way to show it is multiplied by 1 upon i. Therefore, finally, we are having P is equal to a into 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1, multiplied by 1 into i, i, and therefore 1 plus i to the power of n, or p is equal to a into 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1, or within bracket, 1 multiplied by 1 plus i to the power of n. This entire formula is a direct formula for calculating the present value of the future annuities. Now, students, take a closer look. Term within the bracket, the term within the curly bracket, that is 1 plus i, don't take into consideration this a part. I'm talking about the term which is within the curly brackets, so, uh, the term which is within these two points. So that the term within these two points are 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 whole upon i into 1 plus i to the power of n. This term within the curly bracket is known as the present value interest factor of an annuity. I once again repeat students, this particular term within the set of the curly brackets is known as the present value interest factor of an annuity. Now, once again, students, it has been discussed quite a number of times in the past also that basically we always have our two methods of calculating the numericals or tackling the tackling the cases. One is the conceptual framework and second one is the direct formula through which we refer to the tables. So we have also seen that when n is quite small, the i is quite a smaller number, quite a simple number, then it is good to uh, use the conceptual framework where we can undertake some small calculations but when the amount is a tricky one the n is quite long and the i is not such a benign number it's not a such a small number it's a complicated number over there it is always advisable to take help of the annuity tables or take help of the present value tables or take help of the future value tables as the case may be but once again with a, i also give you a word of caution that while using the tables we should be very very careful as to which table to choose and bring into our best use because almost all the tables look identical but we should be very much careful about selecting the right table for the right set of the values so it would be a blunder if we choose an lump sum table for referring while dealing with an annuity set of the conditions or vice versa or in place of referring to a present value table we are referring to a future value table it will be a huge blunder so we should be very much careful but yes once we excise the basic care and caution then the calculations become very simple so over here also the term within the curly brackets is known as the present value interest factor of an annuity do not confuse uh, these values with a present value of a lump sum calculation which we saw a few examples back the few examples back uh, we tackled the numerical with the conceptual framework as well as with the particular table dedicated to it which was known as the calculation of the present value of a lump sum but this is not the present value of a lump sum rather this term within the two curly brackets is actually the present value interest factor of an annuity so this term will only serve the purpose only if we are required to tackle the conditions concerned with calculating the present value of the annuity so in effect what does this term within the two sets of the curly bracket represent it simply represents the the present value of one dollar if that one dollar is in the form of an annuity for n number of years against i percent rate of interest in actuality this term within the curly brackets this look at the cursor this these terms within the two curly brackets actually represent the present value of one dollar if it is under the condition of an annuity against n number of years for i percent rate of discount or i percent rate of return so once we refer to the precise amount which we require for calculating the present value of an annuity for one dollar across n number of years and an i percent rate of return we just need to pick the value from that and multiply it against the given amount of the annuity to arrive at the present value that is the reason why i just segregated a and the terms within the brackets with an multiplication sign so do not confuse this term as a whole term. Do not make A the part of the entire term. A is not the part of the entire term, but rather the only these four variables, that is 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1, 
upon i multiplied by 1 plus i to the power of n and the entire term enclosed or encapsulated within these two curly bracket is only the present value interest factor of an annuity so and this is the present value interest of an annuity for $1 across n number of years against i percent rate of return so this term within the curly bracket is technically known as the present value interest factor of an annuity we will just refer the table and pick up the value of $1 the required value of $1 as a present value of an annuity across a number of years against one i percent rate of interest and we will simply multiply the value thus obtained with the annuity amount then we will multiply the value thus obtained by referring to the table with the uh, a amount or that is the annuity amount in order to get the p so the moment we undertake this exercise our calculation will be very simple it will be very straightforward it will reduce substantial amount of time and most importantly it will reduce our probability of getting into an erroneous calculation but with the caveat that we should be very careful regarding referring to the correct table for the given set of the conditions now let's take another illustration to understand the concept if you pay a good attention to this particular illustration you will actually understand now that why exactly I was trying to develop the concept that the present value of the future stream of annuity is in actuality is the same amount which if we invest as a lump sum for n number of years against i percent rate of interest will fetch the same future value as shall be obtained by calculating the future value of an annuity. Now look at the question very carefully. The question says Mr. Jonathan and Miss Emily are both graduates of the MIT. Mr. Jonathan and Mr. Emily are both the graduates of the MIT. They both agree to contribute to the endowment fund of the MIT. They both agree to contribute to the endowment fund of the MIT. Mr. Jonathan says that he will give 1000 USD at the end of each year for 10 years. So what does it say? Mr. Jonathan says that he will give 1000 USD at the end of each year for 10 years. Miss Emily prefers to give a lump sum today. Mr. Jonathan says that he will give 1000 USD at the end of each year for 10 years while Miss Emily prefers to give a lump sum today. What lump sum can she give that will equal the present value of Mr. Jonathan's annual gifts if the endowment fund earns 8% compounded annually? So we have to calculate that what is the present value of Mr. Jonathan's contribution which is going to get stretched for the next 10 years against the required rate of return of 8% because once when we calculate the present value of Mr. Jonathan's uh, annual contribution then only we can prescribe the same amount to Miss Emily we can suggest that Miss Emily should deposit the present value of the future annuities of Mr. Jonathan because that would represent the current amount in a lump sum which Miss Emily needs to deposit to the fund of the MIT so again applying the formula the state cut formula in fact, if you want, we can use the formula of future value is equal to P into 1 plus i to the power of n is equal to A within bracket 1 plus i to the power of n minus n whole upon i. That is, we, we can equate both the formulas by taking them on an equal footing to each other. That is the future value of a lump sum, future value of an annuity. But since we have derived this particular formula of calculating the present value of the future annuities from the mother formula which was equal to each other so it's better we can use the formula directly which would save our time and efforts but if the concept is clear then we can easily understand that why exactly we are using this formula instead of the formula wherein the future value of a lump sum was being pitted against on equal footing against the future value of an annuity so as a matter of common sense that using that original mother formula only we calculated the value of p so even if we directly apply the concept of p or we even directly we if we apply or or we calculate p from that particular formula the fact remains that the concept which we discussed in the last session as well as as in the beginning of this session that concept uh, remains tall and it is uh, based upon that conceptual framework that we are trying to solve this particular numerical okay so now putting the variables so what is the amount of annuity amount of annuity is 1000 usd which the jonathan shall be given and 1 plus i goes without saying i is your eight percent is 0 0.08 raised to the power 10 years time frame is 10 minus 1 bracket close within the curly bracket it is 0 0.08 into 1 plus 0 0.08 10 raised to the power n now again if you take a closer look and if you can recall which we discussed in our last slide that the term these four terms that is within bracket 1 plus 0 0.08 to the power of n minus 1 
upon 0 0.08 into 1 plus 0 0.08 to the power of 10. This term within the set of these two curly brackets represent the present value interest factor of a annuity. So, if upon solving this, if you directly try to refer to the present value interest factor of an annuity table against the present value of $1 for an annuity for 10 years across 8% rate of interest, we will get this particular figure that is 6.7102. So, this particular figure of 6.7102 is the present value interest factor of an annuity which upon multiplying by A or 1000 which is the first as I have already said that the term within these two curly brackets is the present value interest factor of an annuity which upon referring to the tables we arrive at directly and we simply multiply it with the A or the annuity part. The same process when we took over here also we multiplied 100 with 6.7101 and thus we arrived at the figure of 6710.2 dollars. So the present value of the future contribution of Mr. Jonathan's contribution amount of 1000 USD for the next 10 years at across 8% required rate of return is 6710.2 USD. So it is a lump sum amount which Miss Emily should deposit today at right now as a lump sum if she wants this amount to match that of Mr. Jonathan's contribution. Now, I would like to give you one a simple exercise students, you can do it by yourself. Just taking a cue from this particular numerical only, you can try to calculate the future value of Mr. Jonathan's contribution. Right now, we calculated the present value of Mr. Jonathan's calculation, but you can also try to calculate the future value of Mr. Jonathan's calculation by using the formula that Future value that is fn is equal to a multiplied by within bracket 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 curly bracket close whole upon i. Then the term within the bracket you can if you if you want you can readily refer to your tables but the table which you shall be referring to uh, shall be the future value of an annuity. Instead of calculating the present value of an annuity you shall be calculating the future value of an annuity. So if you calculate the future value of an annuity and you just multiply it with 1000 you shall arrive at the future value figure of Mr. Jonathan's contribution of 1000. You can easily ascertain that how will Mr. Jonathan's contribution of 1000 grow up to if it is in the form of an annuity across n number of years which is 10 years against 8% rate of interest. You, you, know, you can easily calculate the future value of the annuity of Mr. Jonathan. So once you calculate the future value of annuity with Mr. Jonathan, then you calculate one more thing you just take this present value that, that was the amount of the present value which emily obtained that was the present value of future annuity cash flows then you just try to calculate the future value of this present lump sum amount it means on the first hand what you will do you will try to calculate the future value of mr jonathan's annuity and in the second step you should calculate the future value of this particular present lump sum by using the formula that fn is equal to p into 1 plus i to the power of n. So, in order to calculate the future value of the lump sum, you will multiply 6710.2 into 1 plus i that is 1 plus 0 0.0 n raised to the power of 10. So, secondly, you will calculate the future value of the annuity of Mr. Jonathan. So, students, now we shall be trying to understand the use of the present value calculation in the case of an annuity due. Till now we have been talking about the lump sum, till now we talked about the present value of an annuity. Now we shall be talking about calculating the present value of an annuity due. Regarding annuity due, we all know that annuity due refers to those annuity streams which take place at the beginning of the year. Once again students, annuity due refers to those streams of annuities which take place at the beginning of the year rather than taking place at the end of the year annuity dues take place at the beginning of the year now as already discussed annuity due is a payment or receipt of an annuity that arises at the beginning of the year instead of at the end of the year in terms of the formula we shall include the term one plus i in the existing formula now why about using this one plus i we all know that one plus i always plays a very important role over here, this 1 plus i, exactly what does 1 plus i represent? What uh, what do we know about this? So, uh, how, how do we really calculate this 1 plus i? What is the importance of this 1 plus i? We have seen while discussing the future value of an annuity due that 1 plus i refers to the one additional earning of the interest due to the fact that the annuity due cash flows are starting at the beginning of the year actual formula of the present value of an annuity we need to 
include 1 plus i which would represent the additional earning of the interest for one full year because of the fact the annuity due is taking place or the annuity payment or receipt is taking place at the start of the year rather than taking place at the end of the year. So there is nothing much manipulation in the formula as you can see that we are simply multiplying the existing formula of present value of an annuity with 1 plus i. So 1 plus i represents the additional stream of interest which is being earned because of the payment or receipt being made at the, at the beginning of the year and it is being simply multiplied against the existing formula of the present value of the annuity calculations. So the preceding illustration may be more hard. Now we can see that how the preceding illustration may be modified to include the element of annuity due. Suppose instead of making the annual payments at the end of the year, Mr. Janathan wishes to make the payment at the beginning of the year. Now the, I've just tweaked the question a bit. I've changed the question a bit. So the change is as follows that now instead of making the payment at the end of the year, Mr. Janathan wishes to make the payment at the beginning of the year. So the present amount which Miss Emily will have to introduce in the fund shall be as follows. So obviously when the question changes that instead of making the payment at the end of the year, Mr. Janathan shall be making the payment at the beginning of the year. It goes without saying that it will have an impact on the present value which we calculated last time because now the new present value shall be including the interest earning of one full year that is 1 plus i. So in the existing formula and the existing uh, application of the variables, what, what did we do? P was is equal to 1000 was annuity into 1 plus 0 0.08 to the power of 10 minus 1 bracket close upon 0 0.08 into 1 plus 0 0.08 into to the power of 10. This entire term was absolutely identical to what we calculated over here in this particular term. So in addition to this, we are simply multiplying 1 plus 0 0.08. That is 1.0.08 is the additional interest for one year which is being earned due to the fact that now the annuity is being donated in the fund at the beginning of the year. So upon calculating, the amount works out to P7248. The present value of the amount turns out to be 7248. So, thus Miss Emily has to contribute a higher amount under annuity due than she would have been done under ordinary annuity. So, this point is worth noting, students, that under the condition of the annuity due, Miss Emily will have to introduce a higher amount into the endowment fund as she was doing erstwhile when it was a condition of a normal annuity. So under the case of an annuity due, Miss Emily will have to introduce an amount of 7248 which is higher than the previous amount of 6710. So this higher amount is due to the fact because Mr. Jonathan is making the payment into the fund, into the annuity fund at the beginning of the year and that for particular fund is earning an additional interest for one full year which is being shown by this particular formula that is inclusion of 1 plus i into the existing present value formula, present value annuity formula which has been already given by this particular formula. So finally students, so the present value of an annuity due formula looks like this wherein P is equal to A into within bracket 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 back curly bracket close upon i into 1 plus i to the power of n multiplied by 1 plus i. So this 1 plus i represents the additional interest earned due to the making the payment at the beginning of the year. I hope this simple discussion is clear. This numerical has also clarified a lot of things. Now let's proceed with another very important aspect where present value calculations and the annuity calculations or we should say combined are the present value of an annuity cal calculations play a very very important role that is the condition of capital recovery and amortization. In finance to students you will find that this is a very common phenomenon where you will find it more often than, uh, than not there are certain schemes which require us to pay a particular amount of an installment which covers the principal, some part of the principal as well as certain part of the interest 
and by repaying the installment or by repaying that particular uh, that is usually in the form of an annuity only that by repaying that annuity every year we gradually pay off the entire loan and and that annuity usually contains the both the part that is a part of the principal as well as the interest thereon so the present value of an annuity formula or the present value of an uh, annuity calculation i mean the conceptual uh, part also helps us in appreciating that how exactly the condition of capital recovery and amortization can be solved by using the concept of the present value of an annuity now let's have a look at the literature it says that capital recovery and amortization are two important areas where the present value of an annuity concept is applied so this is the same thing which i just mentioned a loan is amortized now pay uh, pay attention students a loan is amortized when both the principal and interest is repaid by way of sequential periodic equal payments of installment a loan is amortized a loan is uh, assumed to be amortized when both the principal and interest so here one point is very very important whatever amortization amount we decide upon whatever periodic amount we decide upon whatever sequential periodic amount whatever annuity amount we decide upon that annuity amount is bound to contain two things that is so designed that it is bound to contain the some part of the principal as well as the interest because if any amortization schedule or if any amortization amount is not containing the principal amount or the interest amount then it is not a amortization or a capital recovery installment in its true sense so in order to qualify as an amortization amount in order to qualify as a capital recovery i mean installment or an annuity it is very very imperative it is quintessential it is staple that the part of the principal and the interest has to be repaid so because if some part of the interest and the principal is being um, uh, is being repaid with the help of each and every passing annuities then only by the time the penultimate year comes the entire loan is being repaid and it goes without saying students whenever we talk about the repayment of a loan we not only talk about the repayment of the principal but we also talk about the repayment of the interest at the same time so once again a loan is amortized when both the principal and interest is repaid by way of sequential periodic equal payment of installments now this mark this word the loan and the principal and the interest is repaid by the way of a sequential periodic equal payment of an instrument so there has to be a particular sequence to it it should not be haphazard it is not that some installment is paid at the starting of the year some is being paid at the mid of the year some installments are being paid at the end of the year no if it is being decided upon that installment the fixed sequential installment has to be paid at the end of the year so till the loan is alive it needs to be paid at the end of the year only second there has to be a periodic equal payment of installment so the moment we are using the word periodic equal payment of installment somehow or the other or somewhere or the other we are hinting towards an annuity because if had it not annuity if it would have been a fractured cash flow then we cannot use the word equal payment of installment so if the amount is equal that every year the amount is identical it means that somewhere or the other we are referring directly to the annuity payments only so this is something very interesting at the same time very very important student and it is very simple very interesting and very important that we should understand properly the capital recovery aspect and amortization aspect through the process of calculating the present value of an annuity now and amortization schedules are designed in such a way that the payment of the last installment the payment of the last installment the entire principal as well as the interest liability stands repaid fully this is the same point i discussed right now only student that this amortization schedule or the repayment schedule or the annuity repayment schedule is so designed that by the time the last annuity is paid the entire loan stands repaid off so the entire loan stands repaid it means that the entire principal amount as well as the entire interest amount stands repaid with the repayment of the last installment so this is quite magical of course it is being mathematical formula but still very very important for people to understand this thing so that they can whenever they try to bargain a deal with a mortgage financer with a banker they should be aware that how exactly the entire deal is working how exactly the emis are being are being equated out of them how exactly the annual payments are being equated out of them because as i told this capital recovery and amortization or fragmentation of the loan amount and interest amount or repayment of the or the entire principal along with the interest in a fragmented manner this is very very common 
we usually come across it on a daily basis. So it is always very important to understand it in a very clear manner. So what does the term amortization schedule mean? So in a very layman's term, amortization schedule refers to a table by which the each and every annuity amount is being repaid and with every passing annuity amount, every repayment annuity amount, the table also shows that how much portion of the principal has been repaid off and how much interest on the outstanding balance is, has also been repaid off. And by the time the last annuity is being paid, the, the table clearly shows that the final liability stands at zero. We shall be looking at an amortization table shortly. First, let's try to compute the formula. As I said, that in terms of calculation of the amortization schedule, I mean, when we try to calculate the annuity amount, somewhere or the other, we try to calculate the A factor or the annuity factor from the overall formula of the present value of an annuity. So, from the entire formula of present value of an annuity, we try to calculate the A factor. In the last example, we tried to calculate the P factor or the present value factor by calculating the present value of the annuities. Over here, the present value is known to us, interest rate is known to us, N is known to us. We just need to calculate the annuity factor. You might be wondering, student, that this might sound quite similar to the sinking fund contributions. Of course, it is absolutely similar, but it is just a mirror image. So, student, whatever you have learned while discussing the concept of a sinking fund contribution or an annual contribution into a sinking fund, which we discuss at the time of discussing the future value, wherein a fixed amount is being transferred to a sinking fund every year, so that a huge corpus may be accumulated at the end of the nth year, with which a liability can be repaid. The amortization schedules happen to be just the mirror image of such a sinking fund contribution. So, the mirror image of sinking fund contribution happens to be the capital recovery factor, or it is the calculation of the annuities which will amortize the entire loan. So, it is just reverse, it is just the opposite as a contrary to each other, but the concept remains the same. In the first case, we are moving from the, we were putting some amount by which the future loan can be repaid. Over here, the loan has been taken at T0 or at present, and the, in every uh, subsequent payment of the amortization schedules or the sequences, we are, the, we are repaying the entire loan along with the principal as well as the interest. So, P is equal to A within bracket 1 plus 5 to the power of N minus 1, curly bracket close upon I into 1 plus 5 to the power of N. So, A taken common, so because P is equal to this, therefore A is equal to, taking A over there, P upon 1 plus 5 to the power of N minus 1 upon I into 1 plus 5 to the power of N. Therefore, in fact, there's a first step, there's a second step. If P is equal to this one, therefore A, moving curly bracket 1 plus 5 to the power of N minus 1, curly bracket close upon I into 1 plus 5 to the power of N is equal to P. Therefore, A is equal to P upon this. Therefore, A is equal to P into this term going upwards. That is, P into I plus 1 plus I to the power of N upon 1 plus I N minus 1. I hope this calculation is quite simple. This is, indeed, it is very simple because P taken outside term within the, the term which is acting as a denominator, it is simply going up. Therefore, P into 1 plus I to the power of N upon 1 plus I to the power of N minus 1. That's all for now, students. In the next session, we will try to apply this particular formula and try to understand a simple numerical by way of which we can easily calculate the amortization schedule and we will also draw an amortization schedule with which we can easily prove that how exactly with every payment of the annuity, the entire loan is standing repaid. Thank you, students. Happy learning.